Hey everybody. I've been tinkering around with my water today and I've been comparing my groundwater to my tap water and my RO water. I ran another line off of my uh, water system so I've got another uh, hose bib here in the basement where I can just turn a valve and I can get groundwater when and if I want it. So I decided to have a look at the groundwater to see if that would be better for my tanks. I have no calcium or magnesium in my water at all. I have zero hardness. So my two options are either the water that goes through my softening system or my RO water. And now I have a third option of my groundwater. So I decided again to look at the groundwater and find out whether it was worth it. And I really don't think it is. First of all, the pH in my groundwater is 6.2 that's lower than my RO water and of course my tap water is adjusted to about 7.3 usually it fluctuates a little bit but it's usually around 7.3 is where my tap water sits uh, just at or above neutral so the other aspect of my groundwater is that it's got nitrates in it if you see the darker red vial here the one to the right that is my groundwater and so I decided I would check my total dissolved solids of my groundwater versus my tap water. And they came out to be almost the same. Uh, my groundwater is about 165 parts per million. My tap water is about 175 parts per million. And that was actually so close to my groundwater, it's usually much higher at my tap because of my water softening system. It adds sodium ions. So I decided to see if my water softening system was still working properly. I haven't put salt in there in a while, but it will continue to work for a little while while the, the, the resin still holds the sodium ions for a little while. And so when I checked my tap water, that's the vial you see there on the left, the lighter orange one. So I am getting some nitrates building up in my tap water, but my water system is still removing the bulk of them. You can see the difference between the two vials there. So then I decided I would check my water hardness just to see how much calcium and magnesium I have in my groundwater. And I did a video the other day where I talked about it's really hard to tell the exact color change and the exact color differences. So I did a side-by-side -side comparison here. One of these is my groundwater with one drop of solution in it. And one of these is my RO water with one drop of solution in it. So the idea is when you put one drop of this solution here, it's a green solution and the water is supposed to turn orange if it's got hardness in it and then you continue adding one drop at a time you shake it between each drop and then eventually the water will shift to a green color and however many drops it took to get that shift to happen is how many degrees of hardness you have so just to be sure I'm not confusing yellow and green or something that's the two side by side and I haven't told you which one's which and I bet you can't tell either. So the one on the right is one drop of solution in RO water and the one on the left is one drop of solution in my groundwater. So to me they are the same color and it's a greenish yellowish sort of color and the more drops I add, the more greenish it sort of gets. I never really get any indication that there's any orange in there at all. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a significant amount of calcium or magnesium in my groundwater. My tanks that I've experimented with putting eggshells and stuff like that in have far more calcium and magnesium than my groundwater. And then, of course, my tap water has none in it anyway. My system over here does actually add some calcium and magnesium to it it hardens the water up uh, that's what this column here does it hardens the water to bring the pH up to neutral and then the water goes through this unit which then removes the calcium and the magnesium that it just put in there and that softens the water back up but it leaves the pH stabilized at around 7.3 there's actually a valve on the back up here where I can adjust uh, the pH where I want it so I have it set just above neutral and then this unit here is my UV sterilizing BioLite uh, and then if you're wondering this unit here is simply the pressure vessel uh, that gives me my pressure and then this big reservoir here is where the uh, bags of salt go so my system is still working it does need some salt added to it 
I am getting some nitrates beginning to build up and this actually isn't bad we're in the you know high summer right now early spring when we get the rains and the runoffs when they're doing the fertilizing around here I can get as much as like 80 parts per million in my groundwater I've seen that vial bright red coming out of the ground before so that's why I don't use my groundwater and after doing this little bit of tinkering around in research uh, I really don't see any point in using my groundwater and then when you consider the fact that groundwater it's pretty cold and I can tell you if you stick your fingers in that water right there it's cold it's the temperature of groundwater so that wouldn't work either I'd have to do it into a reservoir with a heater in it and so on and so forth so we're sticking with my tap water uh, I spent a fair amount of time and money getting the tap water set to the way I like it to be and that was for a reason and now this all sort of just goes to prove that out so thanks for watching I will do a video here in the very near future talking about the difference between total dissolved solids and electrical conductivity I know I keep saying I'm gonna do this video but it's really not gonna be a whole lot of video um, you know so don't really get your hopes up about that one too much but I will be doing that one at some point in the near future and I will discuss what I'm talking about with that so make sure you're subscribed and that way you won't miss it and thanks again for sitting through all this boring video of me pointing at a bunch of vials of colored water so thanks for this one see you on the next one